the GO debate used to be simple. When Sampras retired with most Grand Slams, most ATP Finals titles, most weeks at number one and most year-end number ones, he was universally accepted as the greatest of all time. Years later, when Federer surpassed Sampras' records, he was anointed as the new GOAT. Nobody questioned it because the records spoke for themselves. The GOAT debate was simple. It was all about the numbers. But in recent years, as Nadal and Djokovic caught up with Federer's records, there was little to separate the big three in terms of statistics. As each one of them held some records, each of their passionate fan bases had a claim, and the GOAT debate became more deadlocked than the throne of Scotland in Braveheart. You're the ones who won't support the rightful claim. Those were lies when you first wrote them. Oh, no, no, that's true. Hey! I demand recognition of these documents. These documents are lies when you wrote them. As if the endless squabbling over peaks, primes, eras, injuries and court speeds wasn't enough, these days even vaccination status, number of social media followers and feelings became important in the GOAT debate. But like all things, this silliness must come to an end. And what better time than now? With Roger retired and Nadal finished, there is no excuse to delay any longer. The time has come to go back to the basics and crown the GOAT the old-fashioned way, by reviewing the records. In this video, we will go over the most important tennis records and let them tell us who is the greatest of all time. Let's do it. The records we are going to consider are Grand Slams, ATP Finals titles, Masters, weeks at number one and year-end number one finishes. As always, it is inevitable that some people are going to question why these records should be considered and not some others. One of the most tiresome things about the GOAT debate is that everybody wants to promote the records that their favorite holds. But there is no question that these are the five most important records in tennis. They include the most prestigious tournaments and the most important ranking statistics. So without further ado, let's look at the numbers. We all know the Grand Slam count. Novak has 22, Nadal 21 with an asterisk and Federer 20. When it comes to ATP Finals, Novak and Federer share the all-time record with 6 titles, while Nadal never won it. In Masters titles, Novak holds the all-time record with 38, Nadal is in close second with 36 and Federer has 28. Weeks at number 1, Novak has 387, Federer 310 and Nadal is far behind with only 209. And lastly, in year-end number ones, Djokovic holds the all-time record with 7, while Nadal and Federer both have 5. As you can see, Djokovic is the leader in all 5 of the most important tennis statistics. Not only does Novak lead Federer and Nadal, but he holds all 5 of these all-time records. No player in history has more slams, ATP Finals, Masters, weeks at number 1 and year-end number ones. Ladies and gentlemen, Novak Djokovic is the greatest tennis player of all time because he holds all the records. It's that simple. However, we all know that Federer and Nadal fans always find a reason to complain. Fortunately, we have heard it all before, so we know exactly what they're going to say. The first thing they will say is that some of these records are close. This is true, but there are two reasons why this objection doesn't work. Firstly, Novak leads in all five stats. Not three, not four, all of them. And second, both Federer and Nadal are significantly behind in two stats each. Nadal never won the ATP Finals and Federer has far fewer Masters titles than Novak and Nadal. This leaves both Nadal and Federer at a significant disadvantage in the number of big titles. Big titles are, of course, slams, ATP finals and masters titles. When we add up the big titles, Novak has a considerable advantage over both. And he also has a huge advantage in weeks at number one. Overall, the records are not really close. Another complaint that Nadal fans will raise is that I didn't count his Olympic gold as a big title. Here's a fun fact. The Olympic tournament was never considered as a big title until it became obvious that both Novak and Nadal would pass Federer in the big titles race. Once that happened, they started counting the Olympics to help Nadal beat Djokovic. But it didn't work. Even if you count the Olympics, it wouldn't change anything. Novak still has a clear advantage. 
Yet another objection that Nadal fans may raise is that Grand Slams are the only important record. This statement is so stupid that I will dedicate an entire video to pick it apart. For now, I will just state the obvious. The slam count is close, but Djokovic still has all the other records. And finally, let's talk about the most repeated and the most pathetic of all arguments from Federer and Nadal fans. Even if he has all the records, Novak will never be loved and respected like Roger and Rafa. This clearly can't be true because everywhere he goes, Novak is mobbed by adoring fans who love and respect him. And if you say that there are many more people who like Federer and Nadal, I hate to break it to you, but you're also using numbers. The only difference is that I am using the numbers that matter. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.